because I'd been a primary school teacher and I think we think of dyslexia and we think of reversals, B's and D's possibly, poor attainment with literacy. And that's not what it is at all. When I did my training to become a specialist assessor, I was really quite shocked to discover that they were describing me. So what I've learned that dyslexia is, is that its difficulties with reading and spelling and processing language doesn't just impact education, it spills into everyday life. Um, and reading, writing and spelling is the bit that's on the top, if you like, and that's difficult because of difficulties with short-term working memory, processing, naming speed, and it's those things that make the reading, writing and spelling difficult. So dyslexia for me is a neuro, neurological difference, and I like to say difference and not disability. Um, for me, primarily, it affects your reading, writing, spelling, and your things like working memory, processing speed. Those are kind of like the things that I associate with, I would say probably the deficits or negatives associated with dyslexia. Those are the things that people are gonna find more challenging. I think the common thing that most people say is it, it's a different way of, of thinking of things, a different way of learning. Um, your brain operates in a different way. Um, I, I sit from a, a number of different angles, but I, I, I definitely, I mean, since, Lily's being diagnosed, you know, I look at it as almost, I, hate, I almost hate the term superpower, um, but you really do notice where someone can be a lot more, uh, I don't know if the right word, creative in some, way, uh, uh, in some ways, or um, has got, I've got better abilities in some and not so others. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, just a different way of learning, I think, is, is how I would, I would describe it. I think a lot of times people think of dyslexia as just a reversal of letters or um, something around that. And actually, we find that many younger children do letter reversals, and that's something that's developmentally appropriate. Um, but this is something that is it's more persistent of an issue and more general. So it's not just that... Um, letters may or may not be reversed, but it's also the remembering of letters and sounds that coordinate with those letters. Um, or it could be even encoding those sounds and letters into memory. Um, that is a difficulty. In my view, dyslexia is the distinction between your actual intelligence and your ability to decode written word, potentially also decoding and processing speed as well. So when you're thinking about dyslexia and some of the difficulties with it, it's really about processing speed and the fact that that is going to be different from uh, what your actual intelligence can, can get to as an individual. It's impossible and inappropriate for people to come out with the definition of dyslexia. So one of the reasons for that is that everybody who wants to know what dyslexia is has their own aims and purposes, their own reasons for wanting to know. So a parent whose child might be struggling at school has a reason to know. A child who's struggling at school might have a different reason. A diagnostic assessor might have a different reason. Um, I might have a different reason. I might have a different reason if I come from China, if I come from Ghana, if I come from the United States. Um, so what we can't do is we can't, if you like, um, be ethnocentric about a definition of dyslexia. And we can't say that there is only one definition because different people have different needs and they want to know different things. I think it's good to have a definition and a diagnosis of these difficulties that those with dyslexia experience. I think when an individual doesn't have the diagnosis, then it can be very difficult for them to understand why they feel things differently, do things differently, or, or maybe don't pick things up just as quickly or in the same way as somebody else. So getting the diagnosis, having the definition of being dyslexic, I think is, is really quite important. I wasn't upset when, when we first found out. I mean, one, one of the reasons was quite heartbreaking, actually, is how we found out, because the school um, she, she was going to was asking the children to write on, their, on the whiteboard what they want, what their choices were for lunch. And Lily just wasn't eating at school. And we investigated and basically she wasn't putting her choices up because she didn't want to write on the board. That was heartbreaking. Um, but I also think now we know 
and she knows, it's almost empowering. On, on our journey, for our journey with Ruby, it's it's been, it hasn't been an absolute, we know that she's got had dyslexia from the beginning. We did, for a long time, she's been a little girl that's just been a happy, friendly, you know, out going little person and um, slowly as she got through as she was working through primary school the struggles became more and more apparent her her not being that interested in being at school and being in in the classroom and um, finding things really difficult but being able to mask them at the same time being a being a girl they're quite smart oh I shouldn't say that probably but they're quite smart at, at um, keeping things undercover so I think we didn't really know and how it's manifested in her is through anxiety around going to school. So she's not wanted to, to go, she's, going to school has become more and more difficult as she's got older. So as a little girl, absolutely fine, happy, outgoing, and that's been kind of the front of it for her. For me, um, uh, it, it meant that I, I, I just didn't comprehend things at school. It meant that I couldn't spell when I was at school, although I taught myself to spell later. Um, and it means that I've got dreadful executive function issues. Um, essentially, if you want to know what executive function is, everyone has a, a secretary living inside them and, and mine's on lunch break. So, so I, 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 I can't prioritize things. I don't know what to do next. I can't start tasks. Um, if I've got two or three things going on at the same time, I get overwhelmed by it. Um, I forget to do things. I get off the bus at the wrong stop. I get on the wrong train. I go to the wrong country. I've actually got on. Um, I got on a, a plane. No, I got to an airport to catch a plane, and I, I was in the wrong country when I got to the airport because um, I should have been in. A, I, I was in Brazil, and I should have been in, in, in Argentina or something. So um, yeah, I, it means I can't organise myself. So I wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia till after university and school. Um, certainly in school, I found reading, reading out loud was a real challenge. Reading books in general was just very difficult. Um, I think the last book I read cover to cover was age 14, which is awful because I'm now 31. Um, and for me, yeah, just, just on a very practical level, I, I miss out things like ands and thers and the joining words in sentences. So people would read my work and it wouldn't make much sense. But when I, re when I read my own work back, I would insert all those words which I've missed out subconsciously. So yeah, what is dyslexia is, and, and whether it's even something is like a question that I've wrestled with pretty much my, my whole life, if I'm honest. It's, um, I was diagnosed about age nine and uh, you know, struggling at school, had a diagnosis. And I think from, I don't know, early stages, I didn't, you know, you just go along with life and you don't really think about it. And then as I got older, I was like, well, am I really dyslexic? Is this really a thing? Is dyslexia even really a thing? Or is it just a kind of excuse? You know, you have a sort of imposter chip on your shoulder. And so it's definitely something that I found difficult to define. And it's, it's probably only as I've got older and um, more experienced, I've started to realise the things that I'm good at and the things that I'm not so good at, things that I struggle with. It's a bit confusing when people ask me. I'm like, I, a lot of my friends have it, so like, I'm not the only one who has it in my grade. And I guess it's not a bad thing, but I do wish more people knew about it. I think it's like a disorder. Like you find like reading or writing hard, but then like when it comes to like art or DT, it's a bit easier. Dyslexia affects me in certainly my written work and uh, I think from a creative perspective um, it helps me view things differently and look at things in a, yeah look at things in a different way and bring combinations of cultures together which probably shouldn't come together. For me dyslexia is both positive and negative. Um, and it, for me personally, my dyslexia manifests itself mainly in a working memory problem. What is dyslexia? I mean, for me, I, I think it's, it's a different learning style. It's a different way of taking in information and, and producing it back. You have advantages and disadvantages. I, I don't see it as a, as a positive or a negative. I just see it as something that means that mainstream education can be really difficult for you because your learning style is very, very different to the way that mainstream education is set up. Um, but then it holds a lot of advantages outside of that. Um, 
And if you can kind of embrace dyslexia and your dyslexic way of thinking, then you can use it to your advantage. Yeah, for, for me, dyslexia was about finding the right environment and that environment for, for me in the end was creating my own business. Yeah, for people with dyslexia, it is about finding the right environment where you can flourish and finding an environment where you, you feel like your skills are, are best suited. Things have changed. So when I think back to my own classroom experiences where there was a dyslexic child in the class, the stigma of being dyslexic was far more prevalent. We've still got a long way to go in terms of that education to help those individuals with dyslexia, but the stigma is definitely less than it used to be. And that's great, that's really wonderful. That that lack of feeling that you're different and in not a good way is not great in, on your confidence. So being able to harness those strategies to help you with your dyslexia is really important.